kind of thin. This is just not foley season. The ones we do get are mostly in the Cinderella's group. We have lots of trichomas. This whole table here full of trichomatasia, the large family group. Um, they love the cold weather, and that's what we're getting. The tables um, are not strictly organized taxonomically. Uh, they sort of kind of are, the trichomatasia here. This group is going to get busted up a lot here in the future. But everything on this table is what, in classic morphology, is white spored mushrooms. So if you do a spore print on here by putting the mushroom down on a piece of paper or a hand, and you stand here for a half hour or an hour and wait for the spores to drop, you'll get the spore print on your fingers or on the piece of paper. And that spore print is consistent with the species of the behind, mushroom. Behind. So the color of the spore print, the spore deposit, doesn't change within the same species depending upon its so-called mood or something like that. So that's why a lot of the keys in mushroom identification will use the color of the spore deposit as, as a keying question. So if it comes out and it's like a light yellow color and it's not white, then it's a light yellow color and you don't follow the spore print as white key. Okay. Uh, one of the things that's interesting in this group that came in was these large, beautiful lyophilum. Uh, I like this sort of concentric zones and the wavy caps on this one. You can't see because it folded over itself. Oh. Oh boy. Bad oh. mushroom. Oh no. <laughs> it's, it's fun to jiggle there. How about that? Better. <laughs> I'm 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 turn it oh, that's my off. The simple point. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was when I saw so it. So this is, uh, this is uh, I think, a beginning example of like mushrooms are beautiful in their own right. You just have to recognize them however you recognize them. Don't worry about the name. They don't care what your name is. That is very, very nice. <laughs> um, you can, you can see from just overlapping in the shelf here, here's a spore deposit on the cap from the one above that's been lying there on the table. That's an example of how those spore work. And they're white spores. And these are white, everything on this table is white spores. Oh. This is all, trichomas are white spores. And it's a giant genus, vast numbers. Uh, here's our redwood rooters. Uh, also, once you see, this is another nice thing about coming to a camp event like this, is you see lots of collections of the same thing and you can, you can begin to pick up the variation within a theme that is the morphology of the genus and the species. These are the same thing. Yeah. You guys want to right. pass them around so, and check them out? You know, this is, it's great to have field guides with beautiful pictures, but all you're getting is one beautiful picture of the mushroom in its most beautiful, pristine state by a really good photographer. When you're not getting this. This is not publication quality material. <laughs> with this guy, you'll typically see that much of it. When you pick it, the stipe will be very long, sometimes much longer than this. Hence its common name, Redwood Root. Yay, common name. Yeah. This is the Oda name. Well, the lab name's very right. This is Colorizer. This is Colorizer. Yeah, the Rhiza root. Right right yeah. So what's Calo mean? Uh, Calo means stem. So a rooting stem right. and umbonata. Um, um, uh, mm -hmm. And so it's actually a good descriptive right. Latin name. Like ones that get named after people. This is another common one here. We have the two that tend to go together here. The brown capped one and the white capped one. The Lucopaxillus. Uh, Gentianus, with a sort of latte-ish colored one, and the white one, the albicimus. Okay. Uh, people who learn to recognize these and see them, they'll come up in the same place, and they last for weeks. These mushrooms, something about them, they just do not rot in place. I like have one from last summer camp that looks the same thing, and it's a year later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's in yeah. my garage. It looks yeah, the same. once you figure out where they show up, they, they tend to show up at the same place again and again. And here's a tiny one. They're typically really large, but this one's really small. It's just young. Uh, another, another one that pushes the envelope on white sport because this can be a bit lavender sport is the Potassium nuda or the bluet, yes. or the Lapista nuda, whatever you want to call it. Um, 
Again, this one has a little fresher here. You can see the purple color in the gills, okay? Um, when I take groups out mushrooming, I warn them this is not a beginner's necessarily species because you can look at those gills and see purple and you think you got to blow it. There's a lot of purple gilled mushrooms on that table over there that are not white spored at all. They're cortinarius and you don't eat the quartz. So if you think you got to blow it and you do the spore print thing and it's not white or that really pale lavender color, it's not a blue it. So don't eat the bark, don't eat the dark spored blue it's. Or if you do, let us know that you survived so we can know that it's not toxic. <laughs> yeah, there's well, well, Noah just said that most of the purple quartz are okay. Didn't he say that in his talk? Yeah, he did. Well, people accidentally uh, eat them. And he said most of them have probably been eaten by accident and they're not toxic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. But don't take a chance. Why would you do that? Right. Yeah. Another very popular mushroom in our white spore tricholoma group is the matsutake. Well, that's a nice one. It's a nice one. This mm. came from Casadero. She brought it from her yard. Her sad story was that she had to take a trip due to, I think, a death in the family or something like that. Oh. And so she missed her crop of matsutakis. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I love, oh, I love these. I know that there are people who are like, meh, on matsis. Uh, yeah. I, they're one of my top She mushrooms. doesn't like them. I love them. Yeah, right. I like them if they're cooked, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they have to be cooked, right? That's yeah. The I like them chewed up in bits and I've, put in the I've eaten them cooker. raw too, they're kind of good, but only in yeah. small amounts. Is the best way to know them by nose? <laughs> yes. I think that smells pretty reliable. Once you get past the, you know, it's like scaly on top with that press scales and the sort of browning in the. This sort of triangular yeah. stem is very characteristic of uh, them also. Dirt's always stuck to it, like yeah. grainy dirt. Yeah. And they say that yeah. they smell like dirty socks. Well, you, you smell it and, and, uh, and, uh, and, and red hot. So and red hot. Uh, yeah, it's it's mushroom smell. demystify it says it has this alluring combination of dirty socks yeah. and red hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think it smells that? like masataki. You, you think it smells like dirty socks? Did you agree with that? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I think it smells like artificial cinnamon. No. Mm. Cinnamon a little bit. Yeah, it's yeah. closer to cinnamon. It's, it's, yeah. it's more cinnamon. It's a pleasant odor. It's a perfectly pleasant odor. It's around everyone's smell it. Smell it. Reminiscent of the ocean. That said, we're going around smelling mushrooms. Smell your mushrooms. Yeah. And you don't need to take in a big nose full. They have fragrances, and you can learn to recognize them by their fragrances, and the matsutake being one of them. So is that desirable to release the spirit then? No? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, it's like a so you bite it off. Fresh broccoli or cabbage. Yeah. So you don't cut. Is it edible? So you don't cut, you pull. I don't want to eat it. No. First, uh, um, I would say maybe. Um, this little critter here, little tiny thing. This is typical habitat. Many of them growing on a stick like this. Uh, they have a little short, stubby stem down there. It's kind of small to see in a crowd like this. Uh, this is the one that's fun when it's fresh. This isn't a very fresh specimen here. Uh, this is the we think of it as a Panellus scepticus. Uh, DNA is showing that it's very closely related to Mycena. Uh, they haven't moved it yet. The story is there. But one of the fun things about it is it's one of the bioluminescent fungi. Uh, that said, um, you really have to be in the dark and your eyes have to be acclimated. This is not a light that you're going to read a book by. This is a very subtle greenish glow, but it's really neat to see. What we is tried it again? Night, what kind? Couldn't get dark enough. On this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't get it dark enough. Well, and you need to give your eyes, you've got like 10 minutes to, yeah, to, to darken, which is why it's really good to put it in your room, and then you're go drinking. to bed, <laughs> set your alarm for 2 o'clock in the morning, you wake up, your eyes are completely dark adjusted, <laughs> and then you can have the best chance of seeing the glow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Um, oops. There are lots of, uh, in this season, what I call the, the, the gray tricks, mm -hmm. you know, and we have, even some of them have a greenish here, but we've got this 
stuff with the green, the yellow, the, the gray, Stipticus. yellow riffs going Vanilla on. Stipticus. Um, this can drive learning identification skills nuts because it's just this subtle combination of textures. What kind of gray it is? Does it is it doing a bruising thing? Um, it found yeah. In habitat which trees. yeah. So uh, tough tough group to work with. Um, Here's Omphalotus olivations. You might look at this and go, this can't be white sport, but it is. Is that a chanterelle? No. Is this a chanterelle? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is a chanterelle too, right? Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Right, right, right. right so anything that's sort of orangey and triangular is called a chanterelle, right? <laughs> no. But the cool thing is, if you think that's a chanterelle and you find out, oh, I made this huge mistake, you've just learned a mushroom. Yeah because you've misidentified it and then learned the real way. Right, that's or exactly. Or you've learned how the uh, emergency care system works. So <laughs> that big ugly one. These get um, huge. Here's another fun one. I like to pass this one around to smell, the Philatopsis nigilans. It's very bright orange. It usually grows profusely on dead, uh, I think, oak. Yeah, I found that on oak. Yeah, and uh, even this far away, I can smell it. You should pass this around, give that a, give that a whiff. I've seen entire logs covered in it. Oh, you can yeah. smell it from 20, 30 feet you can away. Smell You're like, it, yeah, right. It just permeates the air. Hopefully, that's a smell that you. Yes, yeah, exactly. See the face? Yeah, that's the right one. Um, coal gas. Odor. Swamp gas. Swamp, yeah, it's got a real, it's got a real sharpy putrid flavor to it. A smell, huh? Um, or skunk, I've heard it compared to. One of the other popular edibles. That one got on our uh, tricholoma group here is the oyster mushroom, uh, and I think uh, the colder the weather, the colder the weather, the better they taste. Um, as I said in my little bio there, I learned my mushroom in New England, and I learned that in the freezing winter, that was the best tasting oysters, and they're like dark and gray and dingy looking, but they have the best flavor. Yeah. The colder the weather, the weather, the better the taste. But when they're waterlogged like that, I don't think they're that good. <clears throat> yeah, these are too these are too old. Here yeah. is the um, a relative. It's another Pleuratus, Pleuratus dryanus. They call this the veiled oyster. Oh, wow. This is a better edible than Ostriatus, but it's just not as common, especially around here. Yeah. yeah. Um, where do you typically that find those? This was found on an oak log yesterday okay. out in Bohemia. Uh, and when did you yeah. see it, Laura? Yeah, it's, it's meatier and it's not as see-through. Yeah. Yeah. Does that have a stem? Yeah. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. You can take it home whatever you want. No, I didn't see them. Does it have a stem? It's <laughs> male. <laughs> <laughs> it has a male like an ambition. It's really medium. Yeah. 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 It's way better than those jobs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, another popular one people look for in the uh, white sports section trichomas here are the honey mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Honey mushrooms are another one where you need to see a lot of them in mass to get the sense of the variation on a theme because they can vary a lot. But the general trick is you see some slightly scaleness on the cap, this brownish mm -hmm. golden tone here. You see the ring. You see the sort of olive fibrous riff going on in the stem and that's usually my clue for like you got honey mushrooms. Now that said, in the genus Armillaria melia, in that species, there are stuff that's nearby. If you want to get into that, you're welcome. I'm not going to cover it here, okay? Could I ask one question sure. about that? I've been finding a lot of Armillaria in San Francisco that have a really thick stalk. Yeah. And kind of like a wavy cap margin, almost like a... Shirt. Yeah, they'll get wavy when they and, get them, yeah. But, but the, I mean, the stalk's like this big. Yeah. And I, mean, I know it's a, I know it's our malaria. I've yeah. eaten it. I just yeah. don't know We've what... We've got a bunch of like, the malaria group and a bunch of species. It Galapas, just hasn't been described. Just, yeah, yeah. Underneath, and underneath, they're, hard to, they're hard to tell apart. They're hard to tell apart. There's one that fruits under black oak that will actually be purple. It's a purple amity or uh, armillaria and it's big and thick and meaty and it's you'll find it around black oak. Yeah. Now my experience eating honey mushrooms is the younger the better and I would pass these by these would be too bitter uh, and so you need to find them when they're in a small cluster of little like one inch tall buttons 
and that's when they're really good. Oh, I totally yeah. passed that up. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and the stems are good if they're thick enough. The stem is like... Really? I, yeah. I, I find them really bitter. Oh, not yeah. crunchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, peel that skin over the stem. Um, there's a lot on this table that are these little tiny things. LBMs. All of these Mycenas, and some of them I have put in here because this this little um, Mycena, where'd it go? No, uh, the Hemi Mycena. Uh, we have Brian Perry with us here, who's our Mycena expert. But in this little Petri dish thing here, you can see this little tiny white mushroom growing off the redwood beetles, right? Yeah. So this this usually wins the prize for, you know, the little tiniest mushroom for somebody to spot out there. They're all over the place. Any mice? Yeah. Just all over the place. And they're really hard to collect. I tried to collect them multiple times and they ended up getting wrecked even when I threw them in my tackle box. They're just so delicate. Mm. Yeah, yeah. They're hard to collect because they'll fall out of your basket through the cracks. Okay? Does anybody eat the mycenas or not really? Not really. I mean, but I think most of the attitude is there's nothing there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> smell that one. <coughs> you got a smell from that that you might recognize? I'm not, I'm not picking any. If there's two M's in the world. Yeah, I get it there. What do you smell? What, what do you get, Cameron? I usually recognize that species for smelling like radish. Yeah, a little bit. It's a little, it's a little <laughs> there. Which species? My Cinepura. My Cinepura. So that's a little, little purple uh, mycena. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what's the super common mycena that you see ubiquitously under pine in fall? Capillaries. Yeah. Capillary. And usually if you smell that when you get the swimming mode, pool, yeah. it's very yeah. chlorine mm -hmm. odor to it. Yeah. Thanks. So um, this is what again? Yeah. Mycena pearl. I know, but what does it smell like? Radish. Radish. Oh, okay. Yeah, radish. Yeah, yeah, radish with a hint of irony. <laughs> it is radish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Can you put it on your salad like radishes? Suggesting smell is <laughs> just so yeah. suggestible. Um, anything else here in the white sport section? Are there any other radish mushrooms? Here, no, that's, that one just came in this morning. Here's another little uh, mycena that, that you would often see growing on little redwood bits. <laughs> the sequoia. Are these a dime yeah. mushroom? They just this is like one that... I'm surprised we only have one of these. There's usually tons of this stuff. This Panis conchatus mm -hmm. uh, with the purple riff on it. Um, you might think you have a purple oyster. You could be excused. Do, do you eat this? I do. You do? You like mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, there's one. I tried it once okay. when I was desperate, okay. and it was not. I'm not going to do it again. Yeah, it right. wasn't. Okay. I have in the past at these talks, people have used this as their venue for going, why don't the ID slips have a checkbox for edible? <laughs> and I'm, and I'm going to tell you again and again and again what Dennis Benjamin will say is it's too idiosyncratic. You cannot answer that question yes or no. Except for Porcini. Right. Actually, I've even heard so, of people getting sick from Porcini. So. Yeah. 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 You could be allergic to strawberries. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's beautiful. That's a Mycena. So, uh, we don't put. Can I, can I look at that? Yeah, sure. We don't put edible indicators on the ID slips because we're just not going to go there, folks. If you want to try something to eat, I'm sure you've heard other lecturers talk about how you should go about approaching it. And I will repeat it. Be scientific. If you're going to try something new, don't try anything else with it. Give yourself a few days to react to it, figure out what's going on. I've already had one conversation with a person this weekend who says, oh, I found a whole bunch of new mushrooms. I put three of them together in the pot and ate them all up and I got sick and I don't know which one made me sick. <laughs> now I have to go through the experiment all again doing each one separately to find out which one made me sick. Bad choice. So, yeah. However you get there, I guess. Right? They were all three now. They are all three in the pot at once. Don't make mushrooms. He got sick, so now he doesn't know which one made him sick. Tell him not to bring anything to the pot. Maybe it was the combination. There you go. There you go. Okay. We need to move on. Let's go downstairs into the room here. Anyway, I found it. I don't know where this plant on the table is. We have a 
costumes, and there's just lots and lots and lots of rustlers, and they're all very colorful, and they're all white sport if you sort of are flexible on what counts as white, because sometimes the corporate color can be a really salmon orange. Uh, pale orange colors. colors. We need the what do they look like under a microscope? What are you talking about under a microscope? The spore, the spore is nice and yeah, ornamented. Oh, oh, ornamented. Re yeah. React uh, blue in uh, Meltzer. And they're, yeah, they're cool. They got like they look like, like the old landmines. They have all these little warts all over them. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but warts or reticulations, and that is actually very important in the microscopic identification is those different shapes, subtle shapes that they have. Because trying to tell Russell is apart is really hard. Yes. Even, you know, from microscopic characters. It's a huge combo of macro and micro features. I know a lot of times Russell is good enough for these guys. Anyway. So, in, the, in this sign that says Russuloid, you'll see, well, you see Lactifluus, but the two major genera are Russula and Lactarius. They both share the common trait of if you break the stem, like this one, it breaks like a piece of chalk. It's not fibrous. And this is because of the microscopic cell structure. It's like little styrofoam balls, which is why it breaks like this. Okay. So does Lactarius. We just don't have a good example of one here. It'll do the same thing, but this one's a little rotten. It kind of cheats here, but the same idea, okay? But the Lactarius, in amongst all those little round cells are like the lactifers. Yeah. Uh, lactiferous hyphae. Lactiferous hyphae, right. So when you break them open, this fluid comes out. Now you might think that mushrooms being so much water in the first place, well you break any of them and stuff will come out, but not like the lactarius. And what happens with the lactarius is you break, usually you kind of crack the gills and some little droplets of fluid come out. And what, what people in the lactarius group use for identification partly, is the color of that fluid. Because you've got white, clear, yellow, purple, and then it will change color on exposure to air sometimes. And you want to note that color change too. So in Lactarius Keys, you'll find these questions about latex changes color, latex doesn't change color, latex stains the tissue of the gills a certain color. Not questions you'd be asking for any other genera around here. It's a key questions that are going on in the Lactarius genera. Now, that said, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, if you want to go experimenting eating, try the Russulus. Um, I suspect people will say this is a good edible. Yum. Yeah, see, yum. Which one is that? Oh, uh, the cyanosantha. Okay. I can't think of a common Pretty. name for it. Green Russell. <laughs> green Russell. <Yeah. laughs> There's two species yeah. of green, green Russell. Both yeah. yeah. good. At least. Yeah. That's what you say. Um, this one you might wonder. This thing turns and bruises black mm. slowly Ooh. as you eat it. Oh. Uh, it. I don't know. Try oh. it. See if it turns your. I don't know. <laughs> don't don't eat Which one is it? Oh, the. Uh, uh, don't eat ones that turn red. Oh, the Nigri color. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. This one has the really wide spaced gills. Yeah, yeah. see, Russell have gills. It's like they just do that when you yeah. rub them. Yeah. Usually, cyanoxanthus are pretty flexible. Yeah, that's another you know feature of the cyanoxanthus. Mm. The gills are really flexible. You can rub across them; they don't break like a. Mm -hmm. Oh, like interesting. Yeah. Um, I was thinking of a riff last night because we've got these uh, groups here. Um, and we see lots of them. There's just they're all over the forest floor. This thing and this thing, and they're the same species. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, sure, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And so the, the, the species epithet is Cremora color, which I think is reminiscent of it's either cream or a color. Cream or a color. Color. Yeah, oh. Color. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are those the ones that are not bitter? Or oh, do not eat those. Oh, okay. Very, very, very peppery. Yeah, you could cook the bitterness out. Yeah. Yeah. But usually when you're finding those, you're finding lots of delicious stuff. So. Yeah, right. 
Uh, now moving on around the table here, we have uh, the Hygrophorus, which are these brightly colored yellows, reds, and oranges. Mm. And uh, do I have some of them out here? Oh yeah, here we are. Here's our here's our really pretty. <laughs> see, they're so slippery. These uh, Hygrophorus. Uh, a lot of the old field guides you'll come across will call these uh, witch hats. Um, Hygrophorus. Uh, what Conica? Conica. Yeah. Or, right. So. Yeah. Now we call them Hygrophorus Singeri because they're not Conica. Yeah. <laughs> not this. I get too good. But they do, do. They do the black bruising. And they don't have to be handled to bruise black. They just do that by age. Mm -hmm. uh, Noah was talking to me last night, and he says he thinks there's two groups here going yeah. on. We've got the really brightly sort of ones with the with the orange and yellow, um, orange and yellow riff going on. That's pretty intense. Like clowns. And then we have the sort of more bland <laughs> things with kind of orange and a bit of like kind of a green almost in there somewhere. And he thinks that there's there's two things going on inside this, this group here. So these have been separated into two baskets for that reason. But for right now, they'll both be called singer Um As far as edibility, I don't know that people eat hygrosomy. They really are so full of water. By the time you cook them down, there wouldn't be much left. The other thing that people think of is they're so brightly colored. Surely they're a dye mushroom. Yeah. And has any, any dyer in the room here, right? They, there's nothing in them. Nothing. People try and there's just nothing in them. They're so pretty. <laughs> so, has anybody ever yeah, tried so to preserve the color? Yeah, yeah. Drawing them. I mean, wouldn't it be great to get like dyed a... like, like oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. But, yeah. no, it just all washes away in the water. Um, this is one that I I think is, is fun to, to realize, and it's it should probably be over here. It's kind of in this middle ground between Hygrophorus, because it's called Hygrophorus rusula. And you know, it's almost, see, it's not quite the rusty to break. It's got some fibrousness to it. But it's got the heft and the look of a rustula about it. Hence its name, I'm sure. But they have this beautiful brick pink color in them, which I think is really pretty. Is this for brick pink? Nope, it's white. Right. Yeah, you can't look at gilt color until it's for color. I know, I know. You're out in the field with the experts, and they pull up a mushroom, and they go, "Oh, this is a white spore mushroom." And they're looking at the yellow colors that are white. No, no, they're they're pulling a fasten on you. They mm -hmm. recognize the identity of the mushroom, and then they know what your spore print makes. Mm -hmm. They are not seeing yeah. spores going, "Oh, look, I see spores." Yeah. They're white. That doesn't happen. <coughs> um, off in this corner, in the entolomatoid, pluteoid area here, we have lots of these pretty, really dark blue. Uh, what we're calling Leptonias. I think they're pushing these back into the Antiloma genus. Um, as you can see on the science here, nobody's putting genus uh, species names on these things. They're just Leptonias. They're really pretty. Those nice steel blue stems and the really dark blue caps. You think they may die? <laughs> do they? No. These don't die, do they? No. Do they? Anybody try Leptonias for dying? No. I can't imagine they weren't. Um, Try and try. Yeah, yeah try so and try. Too many of them to get, yeah. Yeah. Now here's here's one uh, in the Pluteus group, and again we got a spore print off of it while it was sitting here over the weekend. So here's the spore print oh, wow. of Pluteus. Okay. Now in the books, you will see descriptions that say Pluteus have pink spores. So this is pink. <laughs> this is this is pink in mycological speak. Yeah. Okay. So just it's not that. <laughs> I call that flesh. You know. Yeah, it's really. But then you get well, who's flesh? So yeah. Okay. So that's what's called pink. It's this kind of brownish. Yeah, brownish. Reddish brownish. Yeah, reddish brownish kind of going on. And you can see the color in the gills. It kind of gives it that sort of ruddy pinkish kind of thing going. Um, these are all saprophytes. They're usually growing on dead wood. They have this like streaky brown nature on the stalk. They've got this little uh, umbo here. This one's being a great showman here. Uh, umbo on the cap here. This sort of like translucent watery look in the top is a very sort of characteristic of Pluteus. And they are, if you can see the, the way the gills meet the stem, or more to the point, the way they don't meet the stem, these are free gills. And I won't do it with this one, but you can often, um, yeah, see here, growing on wood, right? You can often do this trick of 
you pull it out, and it's like a ball and socket joint between the stem and the cap. Oh, wow. That's often characteristic of Pluteus. Uh, okay. Because of the free gills. Yes, right. You pull the stem out, and the gills don't right. come with it. But there also seems to be like a a layer of tissue in there that breaks apart easily and produces this. This didn't do it so well, but usually it's kind of a nice rounded knob. It kind of looks like, a, like mm -hmm. a arm bone. Yeah. Hmm. So Pluteus is also where the oysters are. Why does that look so different? Or is that a different group? That's a... Okay, the oysters are up there mm -hmm. in the trichelomas with white spores. So why is that also Pluteus? Or is it a it's a Pluteus. Oh, Pleurotus. Okay. Oysters are Pleurotus. Okay. These are Pluteus. Yes, that is confusing. It is yeah. confusing. Yeah, right. And if I'm saying Pleurotus, I'm sorry. These are Pluteus. That's a Pleurotus. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, if we keep on going around here, we, we're going to start getting into the other color spores here. Um, usually in the past, we've had better representation from the agaricus, but here's our weed, agaricus hondensis, that grows all over the place and people find it not edible. I cooked it once to try it for fun and tasted like artificial smoke flavoring. <laughs> Disgusting. Okay, there's your testimony. And I, so I couldn't yeah. eat enough of it to make myself throw up, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It actually does physically contain phenol, and that's not good for you. Yeah. Not, yeah. 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 These are, I just was curious. I wasn't going to actually. These are really them. the Agaricus Hunter's disappointment, because you see them roadside. You can spot them at 30 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah. They look gorgeous. Yeah. Don't they look like the prince? If you miss the idea, cook something? it up, you're not going to be able to choke it down. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's uh, the loser lunch. <laughs> I think we got a prince here. Prince? Yeah. Oh. So people love this little critter. And that one gets confused with Hondensis a lot. Yes, it does. It looks so much like. Isn't that a. Uh... <coughs> I'm not getting much of the odor off that one. because it has an open. Let's see. It's, it sure looks it's like It's a prince. press. This is another Hondensis. Is it really? It's we've another Hondensis. We've been fooled oh, again. That is, that is yeah. Hondensis. Yeah. Yeah. It'll get, it'll get darker no as it matures. No being all not almondy. Yeah, there's no yellow uh, staining, right? The base yeah. of the stipe is also um, engorged, uh, you know, bulbous. Yeah. Uh, if you were to cut that mushroom in half, it would probably stain pinkish. Yeah. Uh, right. And it, that's okay. condensus. And right. if, you, if it was older, it would have a very, um, yeah. very uh, noticeable More of the ring. darker, scaly, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. The other one's a good edible. This uh, uh, subroot essence, yeah. yeah. No, those are good. I just made a pizza with those. They're delicious. They are delicious. Uh, you may recognize a trait in these things that's familiar if you look at your mushrooms in the salad bar. Um, the gills have this like pinkish color to them because the spore print on these things is this sort of dark chocolatey brown color. That's the spore print color of agaricus. The spores are not maturing yet on this much. There may be a few of them, so all it produces is this sort of pinkish cast to the gills. When they finally get maturing, you'll see portabella colored gills. Mm. That chocolatey spore print color. If you want to grow mushrooms in your lawn, throw uh, mature portabellas all over the place out in your yard. It can happen. <laughs> it's easy too. <laughs> Yes, agaricus are cultivated because they're a saprotroph. They digest dead organic material, so it's easy to grow them they in caves in Pennsylvania. Right, yes. Uh, moving on, we have the coprinus group, uh, which has our which has our our favorite edible, one of these things, the uh, shaggy mane, uh, which is this is a black spored mushroom. And as you can see, there are no black spores being produced yet on this thing. Mm -hmm. And when this thing produces its spores, it starts generally at the bottom edge of the cap, the bottom edge of the cap, the outside edge of the cap, it's in an odd place. And it liquefies its tissue and then drops the spores off. Oh, yes. We have some that are liquefying, Delicates, but it's not right. the same species. Right. This is one where you... Coprinus comatus. Coprinus comatus, comatus, <laughs> shaggy mane. Right. right. Common names. The lawyer's wig. <laughs> lawyer's wig. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I know that these grow all over the campus at Sonoma State where I work, and they're huge. They're like a foot tall. 
but they spray like crazy on the campus, and I'm really hesitant to uh, eat mushrooms picked from where they're spraying yeah. stuff. But you'll see them in the forest too. So. Yeah. yeah. So urban and forest. Too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. Uh, this one has pretty much uh, gone. This was not a commodus. This is just a plant of lagopus. You often find this on straw bales or in the mulch outside landscaping areas. I think there's some in downtown Occidental. Uh, popping up, but this is that this is that liquefying, deliquescing feature where it's turning turning black and falling apart as it does it. Um, is a cool word. Yeah, it is a fool. It's fun to say, deliquescent. It's deliquescent. It's deliquescent. It's, deliquescent. it's so deliquescent. <laughs> uh, here's our very common one, our Sathorella uh, paluliformis. Uh, this very clustered form is very typical for it. These wiggly white stems, brownish caps that change color depending upon moisture content, hence the name hygrophonus. And uh, again, very dark spore. If you've got the overlapping caps here, you might see some of the dark spores uh, going on in here. Do they grow on wood? Yes. Can I eat them? No. I don't know, can you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, South Arella are good. They're really tasty. They're just hard to get them in good shape and get enough of them. Satirella mm. what? Uh, Paluliformis. Yeah. And they don't look edible, so most people don't eat it. Yeah, they don't look edible to me either. Yeah. 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 Sort of. People confuse them all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have to there dinner. Yeah, no, it's just a, yeah, yeah, then they have dinner. I'm just having dinner. I'm not getting high. And the jack o' lantern are the two I can think of. Um, there's a lot of. There's a lot. Alan really uh, Rockefeller, Rockefeller I has got lots of pictures of mycelium. Um, That's bioluminous. Um, then we come into, uh, since we're going in table order here, uh, in the bolete group here, and I said this is kind of not the season for bolets, but the ones that we do get in this season are mostly suillus. Uh, here's our uh, suillus fuscotomentosus. Uh, suillus are generally known for this sort of, I think it was a yellowish riff, even though, no, nah, that's not one. Um, you know, this kind of riff going on here, mm -hmm. or this kind of stuff going on here. Uh, the Suillus look, tomentosis in here. Um, they have this decoration on the stem that are called punctate. Uh, so if you look at this really close in a hand lens, you'll see a little like dots of, I don't know what it is, resinous tissue that's kind of pulled up. They're, they're, they're that's a different of species that has very similar characteristics. Is that what that is? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. And they kind of clump together? Yeah. 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 Okay. Fantastic. And the nickname is glandular dots, but they're not a gland. Yeah, they're not a gland. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, most Suellus you can try eating. All of them. All of them, right? Yeah. Some um, of them taste lemony. They're good. Yeah. I, th I think some of them get a bad rap. They're better tasting than you might think. Yeah. So because they look like this, people are like, I'm not eating that. This tastes good. I find that lemony taste to be kind of obnoxious, actually, and also it can cause an allergic reaction. I, oh, I, of course. I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually allergic to Suella sponge and cystin cut. Touching it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are people who have contact dermatitis with Suellus. My hands wow. turn compl completely Suelis black, and it, you have to wait like a week yeah, for your hands right. to get back to yeah. normal. Yeah, handing Suellus, you'll get sticky, just be like black. sticky, oh, for sticky sure. fingers and hands. Right. But I mean, people who get like a poison oak reaction from mm -hmm. Suellus. Uh, that can happen too. Yeah, that can happen too, and they don't want to be sucks. eating it. Our real thin <laughs> section here are, are is our chanterelle oh, group. Them, I don't, I don't know um, here's our classic um, yeah. California oh, chanterelle. Oh. Okay, very pretty specimen here. I found that. Um, he didn't eat it. He left it on the table. Thank you. Yeah. He ate the others. <laughs> uh, here, here is one uh, that's really in the chanterelle group, but I wouldn't call this a chanterelle. No. Um, yeah. Gompus. It's Gompus. not related to chanterelles. It's what? It's not even related. It's not even related, yeah. It's related to stink horns, as it turns out. Oh, yeah. Wow. It, has yeah. Folds. it has folds instead of gills. Yeah, right. Okay, yeah. right. So if you look at this surface on these things, you can see the folds here. You can see the folds here. So we, we, tend, we try to tell you that these are not gills, these are folds. Right. Okay. Okay. They don't have a sharp edge like gills. They'll also, if you look in between the gills, you see all this sort of like wiggly, connecting, veiny looking mm. things here. That's that's what chanterelles do. Now that said, I know you can buy pig's ears at Whole Foods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, market. You mean violet chanterelles? Viola chanterelles. Uh -huh. See, it's all <laughs> <laughs> it's Yeah, yeah, yeah they are being all sold as marketing. purple chanterelles. Yeah. 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 Violet chanterelles. Up the price. And, the and, and I think I have seen these things in the store also. That would because be awesome. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Are they poison? Now, I have tried these. I don't Some care for them. them. But yeah, I know you'll find people yeah. in the group, probably underneath this tent, who would go yum, yum, yum. Not me. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah, see, here's one I'm standing right next to one that went, yeah. They don't taste like anything. But you, you made poor Farellish yeah, yummy, so she's a good cook. Yeah, and I just do yeah, mushroom soup yeah. with that. I take it easy. It's really colorful. This is kind of a just, pale one, but they often show up really yeah. bright orange. So it has a really good like flavor. because you knew it as pig's ears and not violet <laughs> No, it's a really good flavor. It's very mushroomy. It's very mushroomy. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Uh, well, it's the most mushroom. So we list amygdalinus, and this is really common in our oak woodlands. And it's highly variable, so people are always misiding it, and they're they're usually trying to call it uh, rubro bolitus east woodii, which is our Satan's bolete, mm -hmm. because it has because well it has the wrong type of stem, and the colors are similar, but this mm -hmm. blackens when you handle it, and it's got orange pores, not red pores. Which is a, a slight dis distinction, and the the stipe on what we call the Satan's bolites, um, Polcaramus and uh, East Woody, I, it'll be really fat. Oh, a lot of times, fatter than this than the uh, the cap, right? And Sweelellus uh, will have a you know a smaller stem. This one fooled me because its stipe is actually go tapers down into like a. A spike, right? So I thought it was a different Sweelellus mm -hmm. than Amygdalinus, and it has this reticulation on the stipe, like this patterning, yeah. and that's uncharacteristic for this um, for this species. And there are some other Sweelellus that are being described in California right now that will have names sooner or later. But this is one that that I miss ID'd myself a bunch of times, and then I see other people miss ID it all the time. So it, it's really hard to. Uh, to put a, a, a handle on just how variable this mushroom is. Is this edible? Everybody will tell you, oh no, anything with red pores that make you really sick. And then there's another, uh, David Rohr wrote that article about yeah, the right. Chinese absolutely love the red pored boletes and they have a bunch of them that they eat. So, really? you know, just because some people died in, in Europe from eating a red pored bolete doesn't mean they're all toxic, right? So it's not a good rule. I've eaten this and it was actually kind of good. But I cooked it for a long time, and uh, some other people I know are eating it. And I, I heard a case on Facebook. This guy heard that we were all eating it. He cooked it for three minutes, ate it, and oh. threw up a bunch of times. Three minutes. Not and he's not. like, well, I cooked it on high heat. No, this has to be cooked. If you're going to try something like this, cook it for like, I cooked it for 45 minutes before I ate it. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's not uncommon. If you work with Patrick Hamilton, he'll tell you, cook Cook the daylights out of Yeah, I cook my chanterelles for at least half an hour. Flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. And yeah. I just yeah. thought it was interesting that Alan Rockefeller posted that same species in the middle of the night last night. Sweet Lullis amygdalinus? Exactly. From, uh, you know, they had an event. From, from Santa Cruz? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, it's really widespread. It's really, really common. That should be our state mushroom. There you go. Oh, Hang on, it's the controversial. Let's, uh... <laughs> Oh, I forgot to mention candy cane. Yeah. So here's here's our group of we're now getting into brown sport, and uh, the variability here is we often get this kind of rusty spore color uh, going on with these things. Is the brown color? Uh, I don't know if we have an inosabi print going off here, but we can get uh, mm. that's Sathy Rillis in the wrong bin. Um, Here's, here's a classic case of you look at this and you think you've got to blue it. Now, you remember yeah. the blue it on the table oh, up yeah. there? Right? You look at the gills. No. This has got mature spores on it. This is that rusty color. This right. is not a blue it. Right. They're also but, they're forked, right? I mean, would the, the, the blue it just have gills that run straight through, whereas these like split before they hit the edge? Would that be a reliable characteristic? Yeah. That would be yeah. a unreliable. subtle distinction. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and this doesn't have that sort of wet look to it on the top but it right. can if it's been raining right. you know does so. that make you sick that's why i'm very good uh my usual spiel is you don't eat courts that said there are people who will tell you that there are exceptions that's unusual but yeah. there's some courts that are deadly yeah yeah we get into the deadly mushrooms in the courts here or the extremely sickening mushrooms the one exception that's been moved back into courtinarius i think is the rosides caparata oh, that's good. yeah 
Um, I like Rosati's Caparata. It's not one of my top ten, but if somebody's serving, I'll gladly eat it. It's a really good mushroom. Uh, but it's no longer a Rosati's. It's been pushed back into the corn areas. But who cares? It's still the same mushroom. Yeah. And it has a ring, so it's really distinctive from the other corn. Yes, it's really distinctive. And that little dusting on the top of the cap and so forth. Yeah, the light colors. Um, here's some more of this lovely, the Gymnopolis group here. Uh, the bright... I don't know, rusty orange thing going on here. The clustered habitat. This is another thing that grows on wood. Sapotrophe. Can I eat them? That's a dye. I would think they're, yeah, this is probably better as a dye mushroom yeah. than, than well, eating mushroom. We made uh, chalk, like pastels with those yesterday. Uh, yeah, right, the mica sticks. Yeah, right. Yeah, you just add a slate to it in water. And yeah. A little coloring Aren't they the yeah. ones that um, are fluorescent? Maybe not. They do not You're grow in the dark. Thinking of Omphalotus. 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 Yeah, yeah, right. I, there are a few species of Gymnopolis that are psychedelic. Blue stain. Yeah, if you get some of the blue stain going on, you can get. Um, yeah, we they are they are extremely bitter. I understand. Yeah. If you really want to get the psychedelic effect, you really have to like work at it to keep it down. So, <laughs> do you cook them before you swallow? them? I, I haven't taken so. those particular ones. <laughs> <laughs> so who has? Remember? Eaten eaten gymnopolis? On the, purpose? the psychedelic species of gymnopolis, probably some hippies. There's there's, there's a lot of psychedelic plants that are super bitter. So. Yeah, including and these. These aren't plants, but they're super bitter. But you don't cook them. So here's some. Some people make them do tea. Nope. One of the things that does show up also in profusion in this season are these inosopies. And boy, that's a tough genus you're going to get into if you want to get into inosopies. But they have, this is a classic inosopy look, as is this. Uh, they have odors. They have fun odors to smell. Um, is that what you would call the uh, corn or the... I'm not picking it up. You're not picking it up? This one's corn. Uh, yeah, the so-called green corn, or quote, spermatic odor. Spermatic odor. odor. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's there. So They're fun to smell. Corn silks, too. Yes, yeah, like corn silk. Corn yes. Silk. Yeah. Right. Sororia. And it's got a look that's pretty distinctive. Yeah. Yeah, they, they have that sort of look to them. Now, that's one thing I will do pieces. before we, a couple things we'll do before we get out of here is uh, we'll look at these things. People will see these things growing on logs and think they've got oysters. <laughs> but if you look at those oysters on the table up there that are white spored, and these oysters here, you would see that there's like a little, there's like scaliness going on here, especially at the base of the attachment. This one is showing it all over. You, you would look at this and go, that's not an oyster, that's something else. And you'd be right because if you look at the bottom, you can see that you know, these have pale gills, but uh, this be, these make a brown spore print. There it is. Yeah. And there it is. Yeah. Cool. So it's not an oyster. Oysters are white sport. And this is crepidotus? And this is crepidotus. Can I eat it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Would you try it for us? I don't know. <laughs> I was actually told that it's questionable but not recommended, and then I was also told by somebody else that it's toxic, so. Oh. Well, yeah, people, people, people don't eat it. It's in a group where there are other toxic Yeah, yeah. people so. I was told don't eat it, don't even try yeah, it. Don't even try yeah. it, no. right. Um, this is another thing in this rusty sport group here, the Cortinarius group. This is the Gallerina. See, it's not, it's not marginata anymore. What is it? Oxidentalis? I thought it was marginata. Uh, Autumnalis? Um, Autumnalis. No, it's not Autumnalis. No, Autumnalis is an outdated name, so if it's not marginata. Oh, maybe it is marginata. It is marginata. It, is it still is marginata. Yeah. Who cares? Uh, the point is, <laughs> the, the point is, uh, this is a mushroom that will grow intermixed with honey mushrooms on a log. Oh, this nice. one is poisonous. Oh. So you can't. And de yeah, deadly. Yeah. Uh, so you can't just like sweep your hand along the log and gather them all up. You gotta look at each one. And I've also heard of people actually mixing those in with candy caps, which is a really stupid. I can mistake. see that. Yeah, really. Potentially deadly. Wow, wow. really? Yeah. God. You'd have to work at it to do that. <laughs> <laughs> they found them in the same habitat and we're just wow. bagging up as many oh, no. Okay, so take your time. So right? how many people have been to the class and learned about the difference between saprophytic and mycorrhizal mushrooms? Right? right? Mycorrhizal yeah. mushrooms yeah. grow in association with the root system of other plants. Right. Saprophytics are digesting mm. dead organic material. Well, but these are digesting. Yeah. Hold on, Peter. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> these are these are these are digesting this dead piece of wood here. Yeah. Okay. Candy caps are mycorrhizal. 
Yeah. And, yeah. and candy caps will sometimes grow on wood, even though they're mycorrhizal. So that's where I think people get mixed up. Uh, is that what that is? Uh, they can. Yeah. They can. Yeah. But not as big as a candy cap. Well, as small as a candy cap. As small as a Yeah. And lastly, we'll get into the Dyer's favorites here. Um, here's our here's our classic. Uh, I know that Dorothy Beebe isn't here to complain, but you know these used to be called Dermosibes, and I thought that was a perfectly lovely genus to give them. Uh, but they all have this look to them. Yeah. yeah. How much are you bidding those off? <laughs> 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 right. Bid high, that's gold. <laughs> yeah, right. These, they just love these things. Beautiful colors off these uh, for the Irish mushrooms. There's these. Yeah. Please um, take them when we're done. They're not cold anymore. Okay. So what? They are not cold or not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody they they used to be cold or not. Yes. These. Are they? Now these and these and no idea how many colors in one. You can see the commonality. Yeah. They were all. It's a subject. A lot of the old field guys will have them as germosomy. Uh -huh. It's uh, because they went with a lumping strategy with Cortinaria. So of the the rather than split every subgenus into a distinct genus, they they uh, they put everything in Cortinaria, which is yeah. the opposite of what they did of what they did with the bullets. Yeah, they split right. Split it all up. Yeah. yeah. So. So, but, so germosomy, but no more now. It's Correct. But if you use germosomy, you're okay. Yeah, it actually is Cortinaria subgenus Dermosibe. Is it a subgenus? Yeah. 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 Okay. So we would call that, Just give it time. Um, nice bag. Is that made of yeah, something natural? Well, yeah. Pretty nice. You know, I figure. Wow. Well, so I have to imagine. That's the the yeah. 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 Oh, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sanguinea. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's mushroom. No more. Yeah. Now it's Smith. Looks like it. Smith. So the famous. Yeah. Who named it? Smith. My academic great grandfather. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it really? Is it Alexander? Is that uh, yeah, Alexander Smith. Is Alexander Smith? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. No, uh, academically, yeah, because he, uh, he taught Tears, who taught Desjardins, who taught me. Got so. it. Uh, now we're off into the fun section here. I'm going to skip over the Stropharia. Uh, you know, there's the pretty, pretty collection of really ambiguity pretty. here. Isn't this beautiful? Little yeah. 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 Looks like a classic, a classic Stropharia look. Okay, Sorferia is the very close related genus to Psilocybe. Oh. If you were paying attention to Kathleen's talk last yeah, night, yeah. you saw her in her materials. Cubensis. They were calling it Stropharia yeah, yeah. cubensis. It's not, that's though. Right. That's, it's right. Right. That, that's, that's a psilocybe. This isn't. Yeah, right. But originally they thought it was. Yeah, okay. a long time ago. Foolishly and superficially. I mean, you could understand what she was saying. I have here. Can I tell you one thing about that that's very cool? Very cool, those rhizoids on the bottom. Oh, yeah, down here. Of these, yeah. uh, if you look at them under the microscope, they're full of these calcium oxalate crystals, and those those crystals are sharp, and they impale nematodes, ah. which Whoa. the uh, Stropharia then consumes. Oh, oh. Okay. Oh. 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 Yeah. 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 Oh, we want to the plant those. Yeah. 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 Aren't are oyster mushrooms doing that? They, 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 they do a different mechanism, but yeah, they're nematodes. They're also nematodes. Well. There's like a dozen different nematode wow. trapping mechanisms in the fungi. Yeah. Because yeah. wow. they're just a natural food source for them. These things uh, are also a sapotroph. Uh, you often see them mm -hmm. in parks and stuff where they put down layers of wood mulch right. and they'll just <clears throat> pop up. Uh, I know. My experience uh, being a homeowner many years ago was you put down some fresh mulch and these things would pop up and eat it all. Yeah. And you have to put down more next year. Right. Oh, and they'd say, that. thank you, and eat all up again. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. they got rid of some of your nematodes. Can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you eat them, George? Yeah, can you eat them back? Yes, they are, they are not poisonous, but they taste like they're substrate from what I'm told. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of course, of course, no tinker on fecal matter. Because the nematodes are eating it. <laughs> 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 I've never heard of those undone. Not a stropharia, but another stropharia. So now we get into the amanitas. And of course, we start with our nice, pretty. Oh, These are lovely yeah. shade of orange, aren't yeah, they? These yeah. muscaria here, yeah. with the characteristic muscaria look of the little pendant ring and the ring of vulva tissue around the base here. 
So amanitas are a classic case of if you're going to pick mushrooms for identification, you got to get all the way down to the bottom of the stem, which can be into the, into the ground. So these are not a mushroom that you just, you know, take and yank. Um, the colors will change. Um, the spots will wash off in the rain because uh, this used to be a whole layer of tissue that covered the whole mushroom when it was an, when it was an egg and it expands up and the cap breaks away and the layer of tissue between the gills and the stem is what falls away and makes this ring that you can see better. Here's that ring, nice pendant ring, the edge of which used to be attached to the edge of the cap. And this the little is, spots are in concentric circles, supposed to be. They're supposed to be? Well, you tell that. <laughs> well, they fell off. <laughs> That's what I read in the book. Yeah, you know? right. That's what right. right. yeah. wrong. Yeah. yeah. I've never, never seen, seen it that way. Right. I have ever. I'd say the patterning is random. Really? <laughs> random. Is Which one yeah. is that? Yeah. Maybe it was. That's Pantherina. This is being called a Pantherina. Okay. This is being called wow. a Pantherina. Did I got mold on it? Um, that's no, really no, that's that is the vulval, out, the universal right. veil tissue that just hasn't broken right. up because right. the cap hasn't expanded fully uh -huh. yet. I heard that Amanita muscaria was hallucinogenic. Is that true? <laughs> I've heard that too. It's like, what's, what's the recipe? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I, because of that. yeah, I tend to hear the riff from Gary Linkoff, who tells his stories about if you go to really northern latitudes, yeah, right. yeah. the Kamchatka Peninsula, Lapland, yeah. way northern, yeah, it's really cold, yeah, yeah, right, the whole, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. then you get off into the whole, that's a great story, that's a great story, that's a great story, it's at the very least a very different variety. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different it's a different species that's been demonstrated it just hasn't been named yet and uh, the, as far as the psychedelic properties in, in North America it's hit or miss Some, sometimes you, sometimes it'll uh, have the compound sometimes it won't yeah I, I run across sort of the hippie drug culture types that yeah. walk sometimes and they see the uh, muscarias and they're you know you can see their eyes get big uh, I, I keep you know if you hear back from them they're like didn't work, man. Yeah. I just got sick. I think that's the vast majority of their response to it because they're looking for psychedelics and they don't get it. Right. Yeah. Well, some people, to bring some it people have to have gotten off, gotten tripped on them, but it's not a good trip. They're lying. It's more. They're just telling a good story. You get story. very sweaty and you lose your balance. That is not awesome. You fall asleep for seven hours. And then there's and then there's the, the voice of the experience here. <laughs> there's also, <laughs> there's also the belief that the hallucinogenic <laughs> material is in the cap skin. So sometimes you see them doing like this to peel off the cap, and they think that's where the good stuff is. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. You can boil this mushroom, throw out the water, and then eat it. And that's how I know it'll make you sweaty. I've done that before. And I, I boiled it instead of twice once, and I mm. ate it, and I got really sweaty, and I, it was not pleasant. Oh. But it didn't make me trip out or anything. It just was a lot of sweat. You just I tripped. Didn't. You didn't. Yeah, I just, I literally, and I, I, you know, my balance was off. I was like, this is not great. I, yeah. I was just trying to eat it as an edible. I gave some to a friend, and he said he was watching television, and the size got, uh, the size of the image got really distorted. And Jumped out it was the vodka. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty. Uh, here's a really charismatic mushroom. Uh, the Prosecto. Uh, it's not going to kill them. Yeah. No, but I didn't tell you to eat it. Is it proper ammonite? Uh, no, I called this constrictor. Constrictor. So you did call it constrictor. Okay. Yeah. And it, the, the base of it has been a bit beaten up here, but you can sort of see the hint of the sack used to be come up and then squeeze around and then flare out again, mm. hence the name Constricta. These are hard to differentiate. Um, there's a lot of vaginata group. Yeah. And so I, I put that one on Mushroom Observer and there's a guy who does nothing but differentiate Amanitas and Rod Tullis. Tullis. And I send him stuff after I dry it, after I put it on Mushroom Observer and he has a huge herbarium and eventually he gets to it and sequences it. And there's, there's probably like 20, 30, 40, we don't know how many different species that are gray Amanitas yeah, like right. this, that wow. look like this. We don't know how many there are. They, a lot of them just have numbers right Yeah, now. he's just mm. numbering them. Amnita yeah. number 43. Yeah. Mm. Wow. So that's a great example for, we want to, I wanted to call it protective, but I knew it wasn't that. And then Noah says it's 
constrictor, so we, we don't know what it is. So is everything that we've been calling Pachycolia, is that one species, or is maybe he splitting not. this? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so not. So the constrictor is the one you don't want to Collect eat. him, dry him, and send him to Rod Tullis. Here's a pretty Amanita. You can see the oh, thick bulbous oh, tissue on top. The lovely p brick, pinky kind of the riff going on here. Notice that clean white stem up above the wow, annulus yeah. in the pink color below. Amanita Nova Nupta. Nova Nupta, right. But Demitar, who was here for the panel, he's working with these right now, and he says through the DNA we have at least four different species really? that all wow. are all oh, blushers in California. Sick. And there's <laughs> subtle morphological differences, and oh, the DNA cool. is distinct. Yeah. So, now uh, people who know me from uh, New England, where I learned mushrooming, I would put uh, Amnita rubescens on these things, and then Darv has to come along and slap me around a bit and say, "Stop <laughs> going." <laughs> yeah, we have different species. Here yeah, it's, di it's different stuff out here. I will take these home and cook pretty. them tonight. Yes, yeah, these are probably are nice. delicious. Mm -hmm. I found yes. those underneath live oak, so look under live oak. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, and they I are like New England too. People love to eat the Amnita rubescens. Can you eat it? Yeah. So somebody yeah. told me that on the cap <laughs> is striated. That's a not in this group. Like that, that you can eat those. No, not this is a different subgroup. Yeah, yeah. yeah so no. different group of amanitas here. And, okay. and with amanitas, yeah. you need to right. have all the features line up and learn them, and then have somebody who's eaten them before who really knows what they're doing. Yeah, um, yeah. Work so I was doing Kokoro, and that's what they said because you can tell because of the striations. Yeah, but that's a different group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. right. That for that one mushroom, that's a good indicator. But yeah. Not always. Okay. Okay. can dry up and have a straight margin and fool you. Yeah. yeah. See, this yeah. has got a little bit of striations around the edge of the cap here. Those oh, is lines. That this so called spring coat? This Vernic is the verticacora. Yeah, right. You can see the, the cup going on down yeah. in there. So this nice is heavy icing. Some people yes. like this. I've eaten it before and it tastes like I put aluminum foil in my mouth. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> that was like huge. More garlic. Uh, <laughs> no, it's very metallic. So say what is it again? Vernica, Amanita verticacora. Didn't Demi name this? Uh -huh. yes. Very well might have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it says yeah. Bojantive next yeah. to the epitaph. Oh, did he do the spring one? That's the spring one. This is yeah, the spring one. The spring one. Spring one. Yeah. I think it's huge. I've seen it. It's so big. Um, <laughs> under live oak. Yeah. Along in the Amanita group, next to it here is this Lepiotoid group, which is these little tiny critters here, which are really dainty and delicate and neat looking. and. We tend to put Lepiota on it and let it go at that. Oh. Unless you're near Elsa, who knows? Unless you're near Elsa, who will like. Um, yeah. uh, we now get into uh, the really fun part here. Here's the lovely edibles, the uh, Heresium coralloides, with these stems with little teeth hanging off of them in groups, or the Heresium arenaceus, where you get all the, <coughs> the toothy looking things hanging off in clumps, in large, large clumps like this. So they make soups with them. And they make you have more neurons. Oh, yeah? yeah. That was in the, oh, the night lecture. Were you here for the talk on Saturday? Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that's what I was. The yeah, lion's mean one. Right? Eat that and microdose on psilocybe, and supposedly your brain will grow. Or eat it under all your own, own and it names. generates neurons. Yeah, there it is. So, thank you. Um, <laughs> This one is another very common, it's a weed out here as far as I'm concerned, the oroscalp of Bulgaria that grows on dug fir cones. Uh, little, they always grow with that little off-center, you know, side-stemmed cap that points down off the dug fir cone. Um, and they're they, really cute. They dry yeah. well. Put, if you put that on your mantle, if you have a nice one, put it on your mantle. It'll it'll shrink it'll a little bit, shape. but it'll it'll maintain its uh, stature and uh -huh. its its shape. Yeah. Everything yeah. and like a year later, you'll have that, but it looks looks a little smaller. Let's take this home. Yeah, <laughs> they're really, they're really little quaint little things. And Doug Fur, you said? Yeah, well, the Doug Fur only in Doug Fur litter. Okay. Um, cones primarily, but you'll find them in the litter too. That's so, fun. Uh, here's another one for the dye people. Ooh. The uh, Fusco indicus. Ooh. Oh. Oh yeah, That's the dyers. Cool name. The Can dyers like on this one. one. Fusco indicus. Yeah, so, doesn't it? That? Yeah. 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 Uh, Sarcodon. Ah. What color would you get out of it? Purples, right? Indica. Fusco indica. Yeah, I think you can get blue. And I don't know what the Mordens do with it. Fusco indica. Fusco. Fusco. Fusco indica. Fusco indicus. Indica. Yeah. So it's Sarcodon indicus. So this is tooth on the bottom. And what is fun about these teeth is uh, they're really brittle. Usually you can brush them off and they'll just, yeah, see they'll just start brushing off. And there they go. Um, the, there is competition for these things because people are finding out that these can be good to eat. Um, what? Like yeah, hedgehogs? people like eating sarcodens. Really? Wow. Yeah. Aren't they kind of woody? See? 
Come what on. I've heard yeah. is that the ones in the mountains are are, uh, are tastier than the ones down here, and they're different species. But uh, I tried it in Alaska, and I did not like. Didn't it. like it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In Alaska? Yeah. Hmm. They just didn't do it for me. Yeah. But then, which is all right. <coughs> yeah. They Moving on to the meat. jelly mushrooms here. Uh, this is another, another weed out here, the pseudohidden gelatinosum, or the cat's tongue. I love the jelly mushrooms. Yeah, that's fun. Common name. If you look really closely underneath here, like you can see the little in the gelatinous <laughs> teeth over thing that give it the... It's also very, as you can see, it's just really... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's a fun one to find. It's also all over the place. You just find it lots. And of I always tell people it tastes like the freshest rainwater you've ever had. Yeah. <laughs> 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 honey, and they make I've, a I, can The freshest <laughs> one. <laughs> rainwater. <laughs> rainwater. <laughs> <The> freshest <laughs> rainwater you've ever had. <laughs> yeah, that's good. They'll take on the flavor. That might be embellishing, but <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't do that. Um, we have other jellies in here. Uh, uh, tremella, yeah. right? More tremella, right? Uh, Orangish ones, yellowish ones. Um, Darwin's claiming that if you look really closely in this one, you can see the little dots inside the tissue. He's calling it nucleata. You can always talk about ID with the experts. Yeah, or tremella. Yeah, what's going with tremella? Okay. Yeah. Not nematalia. Nuclear. Yeah, I know. No. Not name Sorry, I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody um, just changed the name on that genus like a week or so ago. Oh, on, yeah. on Mushroom Observer and, and deprecated. Oh, wow. Dacromyces? They de no, they deprecated Tremella, Tremella. and now it's Nematalia. Oh, my uh, gosh. Anyway, there's there's a huge amount of reading involved if you want to understand why. Yeah. Oh, so um, here's uh, Debbie's uh, collection here of what was called Colossus viscosa that mm. Noah's looking at going, no, this is Dacropinax. It's what? Dacropinax. 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 Thank you, Noah. So okay. here, it's this little orange. Are you going to put it on Mushroom Observer? I already did. Yeah, cool. <laughs> so hopefully we'll change, change the name the on it. Yeah, I'll vote on it. Let yeah. me write that down. <laughs> Dacropinax. Yeah. You got to do the microscopy on those to really see the difference. It's, it's very yeah. different yeah. looking. Yeah. I so we could do that like. Dacropinax. How do you spell it? D A C R O P Y N A X. I think. P P Y N A X. Is that just a one word name? I think that's the genus. The genus. I'll go change it right now. Uh, here's a here's a really nice find that doesn't come in often. This uh, Tremiscus or Guapiniopsis or Phlogiotus is an old name uh, for this one. Uh, the little slit down the side here, uh, the wrapped thing, the very graceful curve, the orange look. What is this? Tremiscus heveloides. I've never seen that before. I've never seen that one before. Yeah, we don't see this often. I held it yesterday in Bohemia. That's, That's cool. a mini jelly phone. I've never seen that it was before. Under, it was under uh, like the bushy kind of madrone. Like, wow. Yeah, with ground hugging. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you, weren't you talking to me, Peter, that the Helvella is a reference to this folded No, I shape? wouldn't be me if so bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> Usually pretty good with uh, word stems. So what do we know about that? Is it like a dying mushroom or is it... You know, I don't know much. <laughs> it's just really cool. It is very pretty. Cool. Mm. It's really pretty and cool. Yeah. I can tell you the the, so the we'll have to have you taste it and see what mushroom it forming basidia mycetes, the uh, the uh, the jelly fun jelly fungi are really close to the uh, to the base of that, and that's where the uh, the other mushroom oh really uh, okay out of. and that's why there's so much morphological uh, and genetic variation in them in the jellies yeah okay. morphological yeah. variation I mean in my microscopically okay. Yeah. okay. And that's why they get so many different names. Uh, that's it for the tent. Let's turn our attention to the polypores over here. That one. One of the things that's going on here is we have lots of turkey tail. It shows up here. It shows up here. Just uh, this is also Tremedes now, but it's Betulina. A lot of the old books have this as Lanzites. It's now put back in Tremedes. Um, so it's the same. It's the same, same genus. Same thing. Yeah, DNA says oh, it's the same I genus. Yeah. So why, why is it that one? 
has maze-like gills and the other one has pores. And how can they be related like that? And it's the same. It doesn't mean they're talking to each other. Yeah. They're estranged. This DNA thing might make it really hard. They have a common ancestor that's not that far back. And one decided to become pores and the other one decided to have these maze-like gills. So they're closely related to a common ancestor and not that far back in the evolutionary tree. Uh, these are also a very common polypore oh. around the rosy board. Uh, you know, what are we calling this thing? Rotophomas. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice. It's very pretty. I don't know. Do you get dye from these? Rotophomas? Have you tried uh, these? I, I Not phomas. The, the, oh, the pink board polypore? I think I have, but I can't recall. What you got mm -hmm. from it, huh? It was somebody else. Mm -hmm. I bet it makes gorgeous paper. But, but I, I did on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's. Yeah. Then there's the paper maker. She I'm right, just waiting right to see which ones I'm I'm going to get to take home yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for next year. Yeah. Some of these species into a polypore gin and bitters. <laughs> uh, here's here's one that I know the dyers are familiar with. Oh, the yeah. Fayola Schwanitzii. Uh, we don't have a fresh specimen here. These are all old. Yeah. Uh, I have dead a question things. though. How old do you think that is? A year. Fast. Just, uh, just a year. <coughs> yeah, they're annuals. They grow up and they then they die. That's it. Even in a shorter time than a year, and get really big. Is yes. That correct? Right. Right. So that's why I would have expected that almost to be younger at that size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They can get quite large. They're all annuals. Uh, so you think my it took a whole year to get that big? No, I think it took we, probably just a few months to get this big. Right, it's been that's dead my for right, and then it goes through that's stages. That's my question. Yeah. The rest Do you think of that's two months, three months? <coughs> yeah, something like that. Just two, yeah, two, three months. Well, there are a few like the agaricon. Now I've forgotten the Latin name on that. Uh, that that are perennials, right? Yes, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, the other thing that this will teach you is the uh, sort of two growth styles. A lot of all this guild stuff that we've been pore stuff that we've been looking at are determinate growth. So in the budding stage in the mycelium, it's done all the cell division for all the cells in the fruiting body, and all it has to do is inflate them. Hmm. This, the growing edge, is the edge of the thing. So as it comes across a stick or a blade of grass, it just grows around it, incorporates it into its tissue, and moves on. Hmm. You won't see that in this guild board stuff. Mm -hmm. is that, what is that process described as? Is that like a, two different names for growth or one scientifically Indeter described? I don't know. Determinate versus indeterminate. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. indeterminate sorry, growth. Could you explain growth. that again, what you said? I'm sorry. It's really interesting. So in, in all these like trichomas <laughs> and amanitas and russulas and all this other stuff here, the mycelium is producing little primordia, like right? little dots where it's, this, it's decided to produce a fruiting body. In that little dot, it does all the cell division for all the cells in the finished fruiting body. Uh -huh. All the differentiation is in. Yeah, it's in there. So the rest of the growth of the mushroom is just increasing cell wall size. It's just inflating the cells. By incorporating water. There's no more That's cell division That's why they need on. water to <laughs> It's all there. <laughs> it's all there. <laughs> okay. Which is really evident in the amanitas, because that's how you get all those oh. structures of the universal okay. veils and the partial veils and the whole they aren't all inflating. Inflating. It's all there in that the little growth. thing. They're all the feeling is just cells inflating. To the edge like we do. These, the growing edge is on here. Right. And it's growing so and doing cell division as it's growing. Kind of like why mycelium. Mycelium. That's why it incorporates all the sticks and stuff. Yeah. It just grows, grows around. Edge, right? mm. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Really cool. You can see it like really poking oh, yeah. up out of the You can't pick one of these up without picking up half the porous floor. Oh, yeah. Um, and my understanding also is even in this old stage, they still have useful pigments in them. Yes, they do. Oh, they're yeah, just they do. A different. It's a darker color. Yeah. You get a deep, rich color. Yeah, you lose some of the... Uh, they, well, you're not going to get as, as, as good yellow. Maybe you might get more brown or yellows. You are. You get much deeper brown. Yeah. yeah but not okay. that gold yellow. That has to be yeah. 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 Although, you can get away with it. You can get away with it. They don't have to be super fresh. I smell blood. We're almost done with our year old. We, uh... We had the discussion about the what we call the artist conch, which all the books have is Ganoderma aplanatum. Yeah. We're now calling this Ganoderma brownii. Mm -hmm. I'm Ganoderma sorry, folks. And uh, Darwin no, will tell you we don't have aplanatum in California. Yeah, we just right. don't have it. It's not a Do the DNA in no, all of them. So what's he saying it is? Brownie eye. Brownie eye. Brownie eye. So my question is the research that's done on aplanatum's uses, medicinal uses, is not this any longer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I chop that up and if you're going to be doing academic research, if you change the species, it's a different set of rules. 
so all the research on Apple and Adam is not indeed on been done on that. It's been done on something. Well, if they did it on that, calling it Apple and Adam, yeah. then it's been done. Yeah, on exactly. That. So it's exactly. confusing yeah. then. Yeah. Depends on your group. This is where you have to read the papers and go. So where do you have get to your actually buy the yeah. article, exactly. the periodical, right. to read it, and they don't let that stuff well, out. A lot of these, a lot of the comments, yeah. not public very information. Very, yeah, did right. they, yeah. Did they a do this? A lot of the comments are shared between different species of Ganoderma, though. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Sure. A lot of the uh, compounds are shared between species of Ganoderma. Yeah. I mean, they originally described them from the Rishi, which is something very different. Yeah, yeah. But there's been research done on lots That's of them, and I've read cool. lots of that it research. Looks like a but Some now I'm confused as to whether, like it's a but I thought they were talking about who, who is the they that's for deciding? Uh, medical researchers, yeah, and who are often oh, not very good taxonomists, so they're not specifying exactly perfect. what strain that they're... Uh, they're, they're extracting they're from that problem. And, and sometimes they are actually cultivated and standardized with Because it was known as ancient mother fungus in China. very revered part of their medicine. Just like lucidum. Yeah, no, yeah. The, but yeah. the Apple and Adam is an right, right, ancient mother fungus. Not the lucidum. You know, lucidum has been used for a lot longer. Yes. But now I don't... And I wouldn't be surprised if they're saying all that stuff that shows up in China, none of it's here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would say, I would say probably. We have a difference. So what they were calling Aplanata, although we even know what that is, because it's an ancient Well, and it may, with these may or may not have the same properties as the Chinese ones. Yes, it's a matter of independent verification. So, um... <laughs> the other, uh, in the puffballs here, we have the stuff with the spent puffballs. So we have here just the leftover shell. Well, it's done puffing. Uh, the Calvatia <laughs> fragile. There's probably still some dust. <laughs> oh, okay, there might be some dusting on the inside of that. Here's the geastrum here with the curled back outer layer, leaving the puffball in the inner layer with its little kissy mouth there at the top. And I've seen geastrum in the middle of the Nevada desert. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, these are another mushroom that I think are a lot more common than you think. Uh, you're just not seeing them when you're walking around. Um, They're out around Santa Rosa right now, pretty common. Yeah, here's another form of the geastrum that they, they, they don't curl up their legs, they fold back their outer shell and they raise up that little puffball. In this case, the puffball part of it inside here has... Um, puffed. It's puffed, yeah. <laughs> and what's the name on that one? Geastrum fornicatum. Oh. <laughs> is that when the common name would be like Earth Star or something like yes, that? Yes, this would be another Earth Star as a group. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Earth Star, Earth Star. We don't have Hygrometricus here, but that would be an Earth Star. It doesn't look yeah. particularly. And then there's like Astrius and Geastrum. <laughs> one in the act of doing or something. Yeah, it's on the <laughs> yeah, the, I have one of those that I've The Hygrometricus will fold up right. and dry, and then like the fold back, fold back and, and, and wet it. Wet and then <laughs> re roll up and then fold back depending upon the moisture. Hence the name Hygrometricus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very cool. Uh, lots of the puff balls here. Uh, I did cut this one open here so that you can see what's going on inside. Um, Beginners are often taught that if you see something that looks like a puffball by itself, cut it open anyway because you may not see this inside. You may see that little tiny amanita. Mm -hmm. All oh. folded up. All folded up inside here. Right. There'll be the gills and the stem and everything all folded up inside here. But outside, it'll look just like that. Right. So if you're not sure where you're getting your puffballs, Super dangerous. Now, the, the downside or the other side is uh, well, always some habitat difference, but yeah, that can be subtle. Uh, one little bird's nest fungus here. Actually, a couple of them here. These are cute little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, these, this actually has a few. Is that pig in there? There might be a pretty old or two in there. This one's got some on there. The spores are inside these little eggs at the bottom of the cups. They are dispersed by raindrops landing in the cups. The cups are shaped to concentrate the force of the raindrop falling and eject the egg out. Have I got that right? Yeah. yeah. Right? And you know what the DNA tells us those are related to in these two? Oh, really? Uh, Agaricus and Lepiota. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah? Wow. Just a very specialized wow. version of that. And the last big puffball that we'll go with here is, uh, of course, another Dyer's favorite, the Pisolithus Arhysis. I love the name Tinctorius better, but again, we're being told that's not what it is. Tinctorius is from a different area. Yeah. <coughs> So, so Pisolithus. So the dead man's foot. Yeah, the dead man's foot. Pisolithus stone. I don't know what's Pisa. I'm not sure either. Pisa. Peter. <laughs> 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 
But yeah, this is a this is a great dye mushroom. I have a I have a wool sweater that's dyed with these. It's a gorgeous chocolate brown color. Mm -hmm. I just wish I'd done a better job dyeing on it because I didn't get the color even. Mm. That's very pretty. Um, <coughs> I don't think there's anything else here. This is another polypore. I'm not sure which one this is. You can see the pore surface growing underneath there. It's kind of soft. This Philinus is kind of cool. Hey, Philinus is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. it's Philinus arctostaphylus, and arctostaphylus means uh, it's the genus name for our manzanita. Mm -hmm. And so this is probably pretty common, but I've never seen it, and I'm sure I've walked by it a thousand times. So there's a lot of mushrooms hiding that you walk by and you just don't notice they're there. And it's it's on the underside of this um, knot. So I thought it was cool. Yeah. So that is that is. They're all paying attention to gravity, so the, the pore surface is pointing down. Right. Right, so this is the hoof, the conch. The classic shape here, it's a great demonstration of this. So you can see here's the part where I was attached to the wood. Okay, so this is what's... It's very cool. And we have some sticks over here. Uh, that, the, uh, more of this polypore stuff. Uh, these lenzites, uh, excuse me, the betulinas, are annuals also. Um, I, the conjecture is that the distortion that's going on in this is because in mid-growth season, some somebody kicked the stick, or some animal walked by and knocked it and rotated it a bit. And the mushroom is going, oh, so that's the way it's down now. So it just changes the way it's growing, and you get this, you get this one set of gills going this way, and then kick, another set of gills going that way off the side now. So you get this contorted, Cool. Uh, finished thing going on here. These are also annuals. And that's the betulina. That's the yes, this is the betulina. Right. It's the same thing as this. Now right. But this was left alone and allowed to produce its pores. Its, it's it pores beats. arranged on gills. <laughs> <laughs> right. to trip you out. <laughs> <laughs> and then did you talk about this big woody one there in the middle? Yeah. About that? Well, it's another brownie eye. Oh, it's another brownie eye. Yeah. Ah. Um, I think ah, what happened okay. here, this is the old pore surface. It's dead. Okay. So this was the way it was attached. This is the repeated layers of growth from oh, each season oh, going on. Uh -huh. And it started getting, I don't know, maybe the tree it was on died. Uh -huh. Or the nutrients in it got away. And it started growing uh -huh. smaller and smaller. And now I get this little tiny pore layer and poof, it's done. So it was white, it was but then white. it turned mm -hmm. dark brown. Yeah, it's, they turned dark brown so when they died. Yeah. Oh, when they die. Yeah. yeah, I think this is, I think this is dying. It's probably cooked. But it's initially it was probably it's white. It's got a mold. Yeah, it was probably white right here. But it looked like it was, it was on the way out. Because it was, usually they get larger, larger, right. larger but this is clearly smaller. Which is an indication. Which is an indication yeah. it's on. Yeah. Um, let's move on to this table up here. We can get into sort of some of the really fun stuff. Um, Here's our endophyte, um, annual hypoxylon thoracianum, or as I like to tell the story, King Alfred's cakes, because mm -hmm. he was lost in the woods and he found a cabin with a light on, and there was a woman in there who wanted to go and pick something, and so she asked the king, would you go watch my cakes? And he did. And he, she never said, and take them out of the oven. <laughs> so he just very obediently sat there and watched them burn to a crisp, and now we have King Alfred's cakes. Excuse me, I just want to say lunch ends at one, which is in about five minutes. So that okay. was for you. Oh, 